radioactive place on Earth, the exclusion zone of Chernobyl. Fuck, it's cold. There has been an accident at the Chernobyl Atomic Power Station. One of the worst disasters in the history of nuclear power. 300,000 people were permanently evacuated from the area. This place is just so radioactive, it's uninhabitable. Mm. What was it that happened? When you, let, let me Google this before I even... The accident started during a safety test on an, an RBMK-type nuclear reactor. The test was a simulation of an electrical power outage to help create a safety procedure for maintaining reactor cooling water circulation until the backup electrical generators could provide power. Three such tests had been conducted since 1982, but they had failed to provide a solution. On this fourth attempt, an unexpected 10-hour delay meant that an unprepared, uh, an unprepared operating shift was on duty. During the planned decrease of reactor power in preparation for the electrical test, the power unexpectedly dropped to a near zero level. The operators were able to only partially restore the specified test power, which put the reactor in an unstable condition. This risk was not made evident in the operating instructions, so the operators proceeded with the electrical test. Upon test completion, the operators triggered a reactor shutdown, but a combination of unstable conditions and reactor design flaws caused an uncontrolled nuclear reaction instead. Damn, son. These are your individual body counters. You just put them on your necks and carry on you yes, all sir. day long. So. This device records exposure, radiation exposure dose that you get during your stay on the territory of Chernobyl exclusion zone. You said, where are we heading now? Where and there's probably no way that you could even get the close to the exact spot where that happened, right? The the half-life is still not over yet. Or it hasn't reached its half-life yet. We have officially arrived at the Pripyat ghost town, which is the main city that was completely evacuated. I remember exactly what is going to be with mine. Oh, so, the because so they washed the town wow. times. Normal radiation they levels are 0.3. Some 10, 15 centimeters of topsoil throughout the whole town, but still there are some places where readings are. So this whole place, I mean, is permanently uninhabitable, basically, okay. forever. And in the next like 40 or 50 years, all these buildings they will just fall apart and They're gonna fall it's gone. Apart. Yeah, eventually, yes. So at this very moment, we are looking at the local hospital, hospital of Frippy Town where they brought first victims of uh, the Chernobyl disaster at the night of the accident. Like firefighters, employees of the control room, and later on, 28 of them, the state of whose was the worst, like they were taken from here to Moscow, to that specialized clinic, where they pretty much died within like first two weeks because of the extremely high doses of radiation that they obtained. Wow. Very scary and sad place, to be honest. So I'm guessing there's one of the places also most contaminated, right? Uh, yeah, the at the basement of the hospital, there are still all those like uh, firefighters' uniforms, gloves, helmets, which are like extremely contaminated. It's just so quiet that you hear like little squeaks of the window blowing in the wind. and That's like, scary. That sounded like a little bit crack. Freak as fuck. All the people that, you know, like... All the people that could be still living in this area that we just don't know about, you know? I guess there's no way to really hide it out here because we have satellite imagery. I feel like I'm in a Tarkov game. It's a very, very eerie, strange feeling. It's quiet to the point where you start to like hear your own brain in a weird way. It's just so dead silent.
it's really cool to see this kind of stuff. Like the the way that they're showing us all these pictures and stuff, it has it's definitely a very somber tone. But I suppose that there's never ever gonna be a very chippy, you know, <laughs> Chernobyl film. I guess that would be pretty weird. What you get water? Completely frozen. Come on in. And she's just hanging out. She's like, I guess this is it. This is what I like. This is my homeland. Wow. I admire her conviction. Let me introduce you Grandma Hanya. She's one of the most famous, like, self settlers in the whole Chernobyl exclusion zone. <laughs> so she's insisting on feeding us. This is the paper she uses to light her fire. It's from 1990. It's an old Soviet October <laughs> news newspaper. Was she Bro, born someone put that in a museum. Yeah. Born here, directly here, in the village. How long was she gone when they made people leave? So she stayed outside, like uh, after evacuation. Uh -huh. uh, they stayed over winter at the new place, and next spring they returned. Wow. So she she was one of the first people to come back. Uh, yeah, pretty much yes. And how many people came back? She says 13 people. 13 people. 13 people. Oh, 13 people returned returned to this village. Yeah. Wow. Uh, four or five hundred. So uh, they were evacuated six would... days after this. I just gotta say, I would definitely not accept any food from inside this place. No doubt in my mind that I would not. Disaster took place. Mm. Yeah, they were planting potatoes at that moment and then the chairman of the village council came to them and said, you need to leave for three, three days. days. Three days we will just take you away for three days. And she said that uh, those people who never returned to their native villages, they passed away. Scientists say that's another like psychological effect of the Chernobyl disaster. How did she make decision, the decision to come back? Because... Uh, motherland, that's her land. This is where she wants to be. She plants potatoes like all her life. Even like 35 years after the disaster, like she's still here. She eats the things that she grows on the garden, like she drinks water from well, and she's 88 years old. <laughs> what is she saying? She like, she wants to cook something for you. You know, uh. that's like, that's, that's how the grannies are. Like that's, that's how pure they are. When we come young generation, like for her, we are all like her grandkids. So, and her like duty, let's say in the life is just to cook something, just to feed us all the time. That's what Earth mm. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at her, like she's amazing. I think she's amazing. I think that she's very nice to have these people all up in her home and she wants to cook them something. That being said, nah, man. I ate before I got here. Please, please don't move. Is this stuff she makes? Yeah, yeah. It's so stereotypically like Russian, you know? Pure, best. I love it. I love it. Babushka Moonshine. Babushka Moonshine. Come on. She's saying like one more shot for the road. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, get in on this lightweight. <laughs> I drink five of these for breakfast. That's what she's saying. She wants you like to finish the bottle and to finish all the food that she put on the table for you. But it's impossible. Oh my god. We just did moonshine shots. <laughs> <laughs> homemade from a babushka in the middle of Ukraine, Chernobyl. I'm in love, That's I nuts. <laughs> I 
so that what we're seeing right there that's the one that exploded that's the structure that covers the exploded reactor holy shit <laughs> i just didn't realize we were here uh, this is it that's it yeah that's that's where we are so they, they i guess maybe they built that afterwards or that's that was always there because if they built that just for this that gives it an incredibly bigger creepy factor in my opinion like what's under there Ugh. I don't want to know because it's <laughs> it's fucking radiated. So on the inside, there's still a bunch of a, like a lot of highly, extremely highly radioactive contaminated, like radioactive contaminated materials. Yes. And they need to take their time to make sure that they're dismantling yeah. it safely. Yeah. They need to do it. In a How long do they think it's gonna take? It's hard to say. Like literally, <laughs> right there is where it all went down. And you said we're gonna get closer too, huh? Love that for us. This is fucking crazy, <laughs> right? Like legit, right there. How how far? Three hundred meters. Yeah, yeah. From where it all went down. Yeah, it's only one point something. In 1986, I think radiation levels here were like maybe one million times higher, but not these days. Like they cleaned all this site. They removed like soil from over here. They brought new one. They built all this. How scary! And, and like the guy. How scary must it have been to like? have been cleaning all this up right after the explosion, you know? But I guess somebody's got to do it. The counter right now just detects those gamma rays that come out like through the walls, through everything through here. But the steel building that they build around it, they estimate is going to last between 70 and 100 years. And after that, they're going to have to figure out a new solution. They spent 2.1 billion euros doing this. Wow. It's far from over. Yeah. And that's the weird So they thing, did build it. Oh, oh my god. You know, in the history books, 1986. Okay. No, it's still here. Yeah. yeah. My grandpa was one of those liquidators who were involved in cleaning this site immediately after the accident. So he was work he was working on a tractor and like uh, removing like highly contaminated soil around the power station. And my grandma, she still keeps uh, all the documents. Uh, that his death was directly linked to high doses of radiation that he obtained over here. And he died at what age? 39. 39? 39. 39. Oh, your grandpa was very brave. There's a uh, lot of people. His grandfather was a hero. He died for his people, cleaning up the stuff that shouldn't have never happened. In the afternoon of our second day, we had a chance to sit down with one of the surviving liquidators of the Chernobyl disaster and hear how this impossible task changed his life to this day. Uh, back in 1986, uh, I was a civil chemist uh, doing my civil job. But in the Soviet Union, all healthy uh, males uh, have uh, to undergo mandatory military training. So you called in after I wonder if he just stays in. Happened? Yeah, sure. Uh, nobody could uh, imagine what, what's really? happening here. Mm. You know, explosion of a nuclear reactor was considered uh, impossible at that time. You know, and so it was expected that it was some minor, you know, explosion with some uh, wow. minor leak. And it took, let's say, one day to realize that it's necessary to move the citizens of the town of Pripyat. They were able to evacuate as a town with 50,000 on population 36 hours after the explosion. And it was on Saturday and Sunday. It's incredible logistic achievement. In terms of 52,000 people in 36 hours, you know, insane. Chernobyl was a real disaster for the liquidators. I, I did have, uh, you know, PTSD as many veterans have. That we used to clean up after the mess of Chernobyl. And these trucks now have just been washed over and over and over. And they're now just standing here rusting because there's a sign on all of these trucks saying that these are not allowed to leave the 10 kilometer exclusion zone. And they realized that uh, the way of uh, memorialization of the event, uh, it matters uh, for the health state mm. of, of the Chernobyl liquidators. Because the present situation when it said, wow, the Chernobyl mitigation was a total fail and nothing was done to tell you that, well, yesterday I was driving at the Red Forest and the levels here was one fucking thousand times smaller uh, com comparing to what I've been person measured back in 1960. One thousand times. 
it's a huge achievement of mitigation. So how long were you here when you... 35 days and nights. And, and, and I'm saying, uh, saying days and nights because it, my job was around the clock one. What, what do you want people to, to know about Chernobyl? What do you want people to take away? Chernobyl is a story of survival, of overcoming, of painful learning and, you know, uh, prospects for a new life. Chernobyl really made me a different personality. It made me uh, stronger, more responsible, you know, uh, more humane in a way. Sometimes it, it's quite good to, to, to have in your biography something which you cannot fail. It supports you. I do. <laughs> Good, go, go, good job in Chernobyl. It's impossible that I uh, cannot handle this uh, particular task. And you, mm. and you do. Well, so and you feel like I like his mind that... sense of confidence and self-respect. Of course. In regards of any other task oh. in your life. Yeah, of course, of course. Amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was, was my, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much. It was, it was my real pleasure, guys. Yeah. Okay, Have bye. a good one. to get checked for radiation to see if we picked up anything. Good. I'm clean? Yeah. Wow, another. Yeah. Yeah. Radiation free. It was a pleasure. It was a pleasure, man. Take care. Give me a hug. All the best. Well, we're done with Chernobyl. Time to exit this the exclusion zone. <laughs> It's impossible to accurately measure the impact that the Chernobyl disaster truly had. I think I do hope to it's one day, like, to tell how long this reactor is going to stay go out and see it and a concern for the area. But what we do know is that this disaster drastically changed the lives of hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people. Many never recovered from its health and psychological consequences. But a few strong minded individuals decided to not let this life altering event take control of their story for the worse. And so, although I arrived feeling mostly devastated to see the scale of the consequences, I felt inspired to hear the brave stories of those who survived it. I gained a renewed perspective of the problems in my own life and learned that even in the darkest of places, in the darkest of times, that courage, seeking a positive perspective, and keeping our head high can be a choice. One can only hope that this event reminds us of how fragile everything is around us how easily human error can have such drastic and dangerous consequences. We only have one planet, and we only have each other. And so, I hope that we'll take care of both. We'll see you next week. Wow, man. He, put, he has his little book of memories. That sounds like something that everyone should have. That's insane, man. And very cool to see. It's called Yes Theory. I think this is something that I'll definitely subscribe to.